welcome uh, to Welcome Home. Uh, we want to welcome you to Hartford Baptist Church. That is our uh, uh, logo, if you will, Welcome Home. And I'd like to read a piece of scripture to start us out today from Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Uh, scripture says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither is there bond nor free, neither is there male nor female, for ye all one in Christ Jesus. So that's kind of our philosophy here at Hartford Baptist Church. When we say welcome home, that's to everybody. So uh, that's the name of our little, uh, whatever you want to call this we're doing, uh, our little talk sessions is welcome home. We're going to be covering uh, world topics from time to time. We're going to be meeting with some of our ministry uh, leaders here at the church. Uh, by the way, I am Senior Pastor Jason Bratcher of Harvard Baptist Church. And uh, as you see here with us, we kind of co-host this together as uh, our uh, youth minister, pastor, uh, Jonathan McCree. He's also our tech guy. So if you get a glitch or something's wrong, it's like not my senior man. pastor. It's the, it's the uh, youth pastor. But anyway, uh -huh. good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. So uh, today, uh, what we have with us today, we have invited one of our ministry leaders with us today. <clears throat> Her name is Dawn Cummings, and Dawn is the head of our uh, Women of Purpose ministry. Uh, just like everybody else at Hartford Baptist Church, we all wear a lot of hats, but that is her official title here at the Hartford Baptist Church, is she is the ministry leader for Women of Purpose. So uh, do we have Dawn with us? We do. Let's uh, we'll, let me get her in here and uh, right. should be here just a second. There she comes. Hey, hey Dawn, I'm... welcome home. Hey. Hey, glad to have you with us today. I was introducing ourselves and kind of give a real quick uh, introduction of you and your title there is the uh, Women of Purpose Ministry Leader there. And uh, uh, just want to ask you a few questions and just have some conversations about that ministry that you work with at Hartford Baptist Church. And, but before you get into those things today, uh, we'd like for you to just, just tell us about yourself, uh, you know, family, your ministry, church, hobbies, whatever you'd like to uh, put out there. Let, let us get to know who Don Cummings is this morning, if you would. Um, I am Don Cummings, obviously. Um, my husband, Vern, and I are coming up on our 20th wedding anniversary this month. Uh, about 21 years ago, we decided, hey, let's bring your three kids and my three kids together and have our own little Brady Bunch. And uh, it's, it's been an adventure ever since, to say the least. <laughs> I bet. Uh, but here we are 20 years later and um, five grandkids added to that mix. So. Uh, we are uh, continuing to grow as a family, uh, physically, spiritually, and uh, God's just been really good to us over the last 20 years. Amen. I'd like to ask you, uh, you don't have to give us your whole testimony, but could you, uh, and could you just kind of give us a quick uh, background of uh, where you came from in church and how you ended up at Hartford Baptist Church and uh, how you how uh, you feel the Lord's leading you to do what you do here? Uh, yeah, I actually grew up in neighboring Breckenridge County. Um, went to high school there. Um, went off to college. I went to uh, Kentucky Westland for a year or two. Um, ended up coming back home. I met Vern um, 20-something years ago, and we moved to Michigan for a little while, so that was a little bit of a culture shock there. Um five or six years up there, we decided to come back home. I uh, grew up in the Presbyterian church. Um, but as an adult, uh, kind of stepped away from the church for a little while, as a lot of people do in their early adulthood. And um, found home. And I ended up at Hartford Baptist Church because I met Crystal. Um, 
through uh, the Owensboro Emmaus community. We went on our Emmaus walk together and uh, a friendship started forming and developing there. And here we are, um, about, it's been about a year, year and a half now. Um, you and I started talking about um, developing this ministry at Hartford Baptist. And, uh, and it, it's just really grown from there. So it, it's been fun to see uh, the seed planted for this ministry seven years ago to where it's grown to now. Amen. Yeah, for those that may not know, Crystal is my wife uh, that Don was uh, alluding to there. And they did meet and they did strike up a friendship, which put us all in one big circle. And the uh, Lord just kind of drew us all together. And, and I'm just thankful that the Lord put uh, Don there in that place at that time. Uh, because I, I really uh, appreciate the ministry she does here. And uh, uh, with that, would you tell us about the ministry you have here, the name of it, what you guys kind of do? Uh, if you don't care, kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Sure. Uh, the name of the, our women's ministry is Women of Purpose. And that, um, when we were discussing it, uh, You'll recall that is none of the names we ever talked about. No. When, and then when you said, shoot me a, the name and a logo, and you're like, where did that come from? But um, God just really pressed on me for several weeks um, that Romans 8.28 about, um, you know, that we know all things work for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And he really laid on my heart that a lot of women just – undervalue their purpose they don't think they have a purpose in ministry or that god has a true purpose for them and uh, our big goal is to uh, change that heart set of women and uh, that god does have a purpose for all of us and it's a special purpose and each purpose is as individual as the lady um we started the ministry with just a large bible study group um we meet twice a month at Copa Cafe. Tina's been amazing to us there. Um, and we just, we fellowship. We eat, we do some Bible study. We get to know each other. We love on each other. We pray together. And, um, and it's kind of branching out from there. We're, um, before we were shut down for COVID, we're getting ready to start small group for those who are a little more uh, spiritually rooted, who need, who want to get some more in depth that are just, we have some ladies that just are so thirsty for more that we want to start some small groups so we can dive a little deeper and just, just shovel through it. Just get really deep down in there into some, uh, some really deep topics and get the growth is amazing. Um, we are, we've started a friendship group. Jonathan and I've been working on that. It's kind of a discipleship, um, with the youth, we've got ladies paired up with some of our youth um, to give them a spiritual friend that they can turn to uh, to help guide them and not put everything so much on Jonathan because um, it's hard being a teenager nowadays. And there's a lot of topics that these teen girls are just not going to go to a guy with. It doesn't matter how how much they like him. They're just not going to go there, and they may not want to go to mom or dad or grandma. So uh, to have some um, females that have kind of been there, kind of lived through that, and uh, to give them to come along beside them and help disciple them through some the good and the rough times. Um, Hey, Don, interrupt you. I kind of piggyback on something you said. Earlier off, you started that, you know, you, you stepped away from the church a little bit like young people tend to do. Do you see your women of purpose on be able to retain those young people? Do you think that could possibly help with that? And if so, how, how could that help? Uh, I really hope so, because um, we see statistically there's a gap. There's a gap from teens to 30-somethings. Um, Teens, you know, we may retain them through high school, but then they become, you know, what the world considers an adult. And we all know is just garbage because at 18, you're not an adult. Um, but then they, they kind of lose their footing and they don't feel they have anybody they can relate to. They don't feel like they have a place in the church. 
and hopefully we can kind of bridge that gap that they may say, oh yeah, um, Dawn's in her forties or, you know, so-and-so's in her fifties, but I have a friendship with him. So I don't feel disconnected from the church. I don't feel disconnected from that women's group. I feel I have a place. Mm-hmm. So they're home after youth group. Right. There's, they're not searching for a home out in the world. Um, but they feel they have a home in the church. Yeah. And that, that whole premise that you and, and working with Jonathan there with these uh, young ladies kind of kind of uh, evolves, if you will, the whole premise of uh, Hartford Baptist Church's vision is taking a young child and grooming them. Uh, uh, I, I don't want anybody to mistake what I'm saying as uh, uh, brainwashing, but grooming them in Christ all the way so that we don't lose them in college with the illusion theories and the, this theory and that theory, but they're sure footed in that. And with those two ministers together with our young ladies, which by the way, we'll have our men's guy here in a few weeks, hopefully we're going to talk about doing the same thing with our youth boys is that we're molding them that, that, we're not putting it on them to try to figure out a way to fit back into the church. So it's just awesome to see the evolution of ministries molding together to get to the one vision of the church that we have established and and molding and making our next church leaders out of the youth and the young people we have. And it's, it's just awesome for me as a senior pastor to see our ministries working together to accomplish that goal and seeing how they can they can uh, accommodate or uh, uh, solidify each other's ministries to get to that common goal. So uh, that, that's that's awesome stuff. Uh, that's uh, you know as as a pastor or as a ministry leader to see uh, ministries working together to get to the common vision and goal is just it's just an amazing thing and. Uh, I, I appreciate that from the both of you putting that together uh, to get to that goal of not just accomplishing a vision for a church, but to retain that individual through what statistically tells us is where we lose them. And I appreciate both of you guys working together to, to accomplish that goal. And, uh, you know, we, we see working with the youth, uh, we've got, I know one household that uh, the the daughter of the household has to remind mom, hey, we're getting on that meeting tonight on Zoom with Women of Purpose. So we're going to go to do this and uh, because they want to see that sponsor or they want to see that individual and they want to interact with them. And, and what that leads to, I think, is going to lead to is when they graduate high school, they want to go back to Hartford Baptist Church and serve the ministry because there's people there they got those relationships. So it's just, it's fantastic. That aspect of Women of Purpose and that aspect of our youth ministry, aren't you proud of me, Don? I didn't say WAP. Uh, I, yeah, right up until that point. <laughs> yeah. Don really doesn't like my acronym for Women of Purpose, WAP. Is what I call it. But isn't that like uh, Italian slang? I don't know if that's appropriate. I <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really not, but it, it gets under our skin, so I use it. But anyway, uh, that that's I just wanted to express from my point of view how I appreciate the ministries of the church working together in that. Yeah, that that's been fun to uh, watch. We were um, we were able to actually kick that off the ground. Um, before we went into shutdown, we had uh, a couple of events um, that we um, we don't exclude our teens from any event that we have. We want them at our fun events just as well as our our Bible school, our Bible study events, because, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of times some topics you're studying in the Bible are just hard and they're no fun. But, you know, you, you, you really need to get through it. But. They also need to see that, you know, we're not, church is just not stuffy. You can right. have fun and still be a Christian. Right. Um, we had a, we had a selfie scavenger hunt and that was awesome. They had such a blast. 
Yeah, they did. I, they talked about that for weeks. And in and, and your conversation you're having here, what I, I'm noticing too is jumping out is that within this ministry that, that you're leading here at the church, we've got teenage girls. We have, uh, I'm going to say your age, Don. I'm not going to bring up your age, but your age. I'm still younger than you, so it's all, all good. Ooh, that hurt. But, uh, but also, uh, we haven't mentioned, but we have our, our elderly are also participating in this. Uh, and not just participating in the classes, but some of those have taken the the uh, uh, disciple role yes. with some of our young ladies too. So uh, it's a ministry that is broad from teenage to senior citizen, and it's pulling again as senior pastors pulling the whole church together as, as the women, not just a. 25 to 35 year old group or 35 to 50, but from 14 to, I, I think we've got some 70 year olds that. Yeah, that, we do. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, it, it's a, uh, it's, it's a well-rounded and in that you get what the 14 year old is going through in high school today compared to what the 70 year old thinks about what's going on in high school today. And it, it gives them, uh, and I don't want to make this too broad, but it gives them the worldview through Christian eyes. And it, uh, it and leads to some really good discussions um, oh, yeah. in I study bet. time. I bet it does. Now, one thing, you know, we always think of the, the older women are going to teach the younger women. And primarily, that's what you're going to have. Their life experience about to pour into the younger one. But, you know, the, the grandmas and the mothers in that, when they hear young girls talk, young women talk about their life, it helps them understand what their daughters and their granddaughters are going through, even grandsons and sons, what they have to experience in high school and middle school. And we'll actually, I think we'll actually help them relate and have them be better grandmothers and better parents, help them understand their kids better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we can, as um, we can only speculate what goes on inside of schools and inside of uh, peer groups with teens today and uh, we're very fortunate because the youth we have are very open in sharing their experiences and what they're dealing with so it's uh, it helps us as ministry leaders to equip our where we need to go and equip ourselves to help them and that's a it's a great compliment to the older ladies that are in there that they make them feel that comfortable to be able to share they, yes. They, yeah. They, they don't feel like they're being judged because they're not in quote unquote that circle, you know? Right. So, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. A uh, couple of things I want to try to get into because we've got a limited amount of time. Uh, great discussion, but just kind of move uh, just a little bit. Uh, you know, you mentioned the May a while ago uh, where you and Crystal met. Yes. And, uh, and I bring that up, uh, and also our Women of Purpose, we have a men's group called Iron Faith. We have uh, the youth group. We have all these different things. And I'd like to, for you to give us your view on, as, as individuals, uh, how, how are you using this ministry uh, that it's not their church? It is... Uh, a subordinate or a uh, uh, worker bee, if you will, of the church, and it's not their church. So I if you can just kind of elaborate um, on this a little bit. The great thing about um, that I try to emphasize is, you know, we're called through the Great Commission. We're all called to be priests to each mm -hmm. other. But at no time are we ever called to be priests to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing within the ministry, whether it's women of purpose or iron faith or whatever. It, it just serves as a ministry tool to those that we may not be reaching as the traditional brick and mortar church. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Women of purpose is not a closed group just to the members of Hartford Baptist. Yes. 
we have active members of I think about 10 different churches right now who are actively participating in women of purpose events. Right. And, uh, and, we, and that's kind of where I wanted you to go with that as well, because I know that's true and I know you promote that. I promote that in all of our ministries and to take what they utilize in women of purpose or iron faith or whatever, and take that back to their church and use it for Christ as well as through the ministry of women of purpose. And, uh, and I just wanted to, I wanted to bring that up and get you to elaborate on that just to put that point in there that I know you're emphasizing that is that women of purpose is not a church. It is a uh, study group. It is a uh, 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 disciple-making group to take back and to use for the for the body of Christ. And uh, so, I, and like you said, you got I think you said ten, possibly ten different uh, bodies of churches of women that come together, which is yeah. to me is fantastic because we are the church. It's not this building or that building. We're on the church, so. But, but thank you for elaborating on that right there. That was the point I wanted to try to get to that. Uh, Jonathan, you got uh, uh, anything you want to ask Don here before we kind of? Yeah, um, I think this one's a, um, kind of important. I'm going to com combine these here. But what would you recommend to a, a woman, a mother in particular, on what can she do during time of COVID-19 to maintain her faith, to maintain her you know, her faithfulness to God and to help her family do the same. What, what, what are some things they can do now? Because they can't go out and gather with their believers like they could, you know, right. just a few years ago. What can, right. what can a woman do today to help make, keep that going? I mean, we still have to stay plugged in. Um, we are fortunate that during this pandemic, we're in an information age where we have some great technology we can, we can utilize. Um, Women of Purpose, I mean, we're utilizing the Zoom. We're utilizing the Bible app that you can use on your smartphone for uh, devotion times. Is that we the version? Are, yeah, the U version. We're using that. Um, and that allows us to communicate through the comment section of those um, devotions that we're doing as a group. We are using um, and that's on Facebook. A, that's on a daily basis, too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, there are some Facebook devotions that are um, Bible studies that we're doing on a weekly basis uh, that um, you can go to uh, YouTube. There's there's so many other things. Uh, we just had a Zoom meeting last night and we talked about how how many different um, churches and pastors that we're able to actually listen to their sermons because of the way that we're not a, in a traditional church setting right now. That uh, we're fortunate that we can, um, we don't have to pick which church we're, which pastor we're listening to on Sunday morning right now. We can listen to several throughout the week. Um, but the great thing is we know we're on the right track because the message that God is feeding us is it, it's got the same theme running through them. So, um, and then to, um, to have that circle and that goes back to that discipleship and that friendship group that um, when you're having a rough day, you have to reach out. You know, we, we keep the texting going. We have our Facebook group for the ladies of the church and for women of purpose. And uh, we each have each other's individual cell phones that, um, that if we just can't deal with that, that topic with our child for the day, I guarantee you there's one of us that can help you deal with that. And we don't have to be uh, sitting in your living room to help you deal with it. You know, and, and I'd like for you, before, before you get off here, if you can uh, maybe uh, give a, an email where somebody would like some information. Well, uh, you uh, going this, to do that, Jonathan? This, yeah, this video will post into, um, if you're listening to us now, this is posted on YouTube. Look down in the description. I'll have Dawn's email address. So if you want to get linked in to Women of Purpose, just shoot her an email and she'll get back with you. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And if, and if, and if you can uh, kind of, give when your next meeting is going to be. And, uh, and I guess if through that email, if they'll contact you, you can make sure they get the, uh, 
uh, login information to the Absolutely. Meeting. If you can share uh, some of that stuff with us before we get off here. Yeah, and our Facebook page is an, is a uh, public Facebook page, so anybody can find it. Um, and it and it uh, will have all of uh, we post all of our uh, when we're going to be meeting and what's going on um, in there that anybody can shoot us messages in there. Um, so yeah. And if and if any time anybody that's listening or watching today uh, wants to get a hold of any of us, you can go to our website uh, www.arfordbaptistchurch.org. And all of our contact information is in there under the staff uh, icon. If you'll hit that, you can go through and you can find all of our information if you want to individually or if you just want to email and talk to the church. That's always open. Uh, but I think, Don, your next meeting is uh, two, let's see, would be what? Two weeks from yesterday. Well, we're going to post this on Friday. So okay. Yeah, we'll, it'll be. Uh, so that's going to be on the 18th? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. May the 18th at 6 p.m., correct, Central Time? Yes. Okay. And if you'd like that link, uh, as this post, you'll see at the bottom there Don's email. Or, again, you can go to our website. You can contact any of the three of us, and we can make sure you get there. Uh, Don, it's been great having you. Uh, we're blessed at Harper Baptist Church to have you leading our women's uh, Women of Purpose ministry there. Uh, and again, if you got any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, if you'd like to be a part, doesn't matter. We don't care uh, where you go to church. We just want to make sure that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You've accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't, we invite you to talk to us about that. And okay. any one of the three of us. And we'd like to talk to you about who Jesus is. And Don, we're going to have you back in a few weeks. And I'm going to leave you with a question. All right. And you have, and you bring us back uh, the greatest uh, women's theological uh, explanation to this <laughs> that you ever could imagine. And the question, who was right, Mary or Martha? That's one of the questions Jonathan put out there. Yeah. We was going to talk about Luke today. ten thirty eight through forty two. Yeah, which, Luke, which sister was right? Yeah, which one? Which 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 one of the women was right? Now you know, in, in me and Jonathan's book. It's whoever we're talking to, that woman's bound to be right, okay? But now we've got two women here, and we want a, women, a woman's perspective on which one of them was right. And that's, uh, Jonathan said, Luke 10, 38 through 42, Mary and Martha. So don't want any answers now. We really want you to get this <laughs> huge theological answer for us for the next time we have you on here. But, uh, but Don, thank you for visiting with us. Uh, very informative. Uh, and again, we thank you for uh, leading that ministry at Hartford Baptist Church. And uh, I know that the ladies that are involved in that uh, love it dearly, and they hold it close to their hearts. So we thank you. For it, it. It's been a joy for sure. Jonathan, you got any last words? No. Um, which, no so I, to me, the, the most important question we had on it, you didn't ask, ask her, is oh, what's better, Star Trek or Star Wars? Yeah. Neither yeah. one. Well, because, see, this week was – oh, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes. He's out. Mike, drop. Because, you know, this was May the 4th Be With You week. You know, you, you May, can't go there. You can't May, May the 4th Be With You is this week. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, that was, a, that was a youth pastor mic drop right there is what that was. So. But anyway, I guess we'll get off of here. Don, thank you again. Jonathan, it's been great. And as we uh, head out, I'm going to ask Don, would you uh, uh, would you pray for those that are watching us today and pray for the ministries of Hartford Baptist Church as we move forward uh, as we minister through this COVID? Absolutely. Father God, we thank you for um, the opportunity to uh, be able to minister to 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 those who are out there, that those that you are uh, directing to tune in to us, that even during this time of isolation, um, that, that we know that we are not isolated, that you are using each individual ministry of not only Hartford Baptist, but of all the church, your church throughout the world to minister to those who are in desperate need 
uh, to be able to see your face during all of this uh, when we may feel so isolated and alone. Please, uh, you know, let us impress upon their heart that um, that it's okay to be fear, to have fear is an emotion um, because it is a scary time as we go through these times, but it is not okay to have a spirit of fear because you did not come to give us a spirit of fear. You came to give us a spirit of hope and of love and of joy. And that is what we need to rest in. And that is that we know that, um, that you will use this, this time for your glory. And then we come through it, that we will be ever closer to you. Um, I pray that if there's one who does not know you today, that they do reach out to one of us and that we may be able to uh, show them your love and your grace and your mercy through it all. We thank you for the blessings that you continue to bestow on us each and every day. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And once again, welcome home to Hartford Baptist Church. Contact us through all the avenues we've talked about today. We want to get to know you. We want to get to disciple you right where you're at. We're not waiting for you to become the church person. We want to welcome you home so we can minister to you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, Have a God. blessed day. Mm -hmm.